Hello, the goal of this video is to show you how you might use some software like Desmos to model something that is oscillating, in this case, temperature. Here is some data, and we are looking at the average maximum mean temperature of Tompkins County. We're modeling it with a sinusoid function based on some really straightforward calculations about midline and amplitude and so on and so forth. Then, if we consider trends on heating, how would that make future iterations of our average maximum temperature look over time? And what you're seeing here is a slight increase in midline and the associated sinusoid. At first, these things are very close. But over time, as we scroll along here, we'll see deviation in those waves, right? This upward heating trend right here. In this case, it's months on the bottom. It's clearly very different from where we're at currently. So that's just some of the basics of what we are doing. Then um, I've got one other thing I want to show, which is how we might consider the effect of an average change on, let's say, some specific aspect of our temperature, our yearly maximum temperature. So um, in this folder right here, and I'll show you how to go through this, you have these data points and a model of that data. If we know that there's some general increase in temperature, we have the ability to drag these points, right? So this is a month in the year right now, and I'm making it get really, really hot, okay? And then see the impact on the model. So let's get started. Um, I chose for this the Climate Explorer. I really like their data layout, but really any you can go to any data source that you want to use. In this case, if you're using Climate Explorer, here we are on the average daily maximum temperature. That's what I'm going to look at. And we want to look at the monthly data. So by month, where is the average daily max temperature? And there's a lot of information here. Let's clean this up. I'm going to get rid of the lower and higher emission projections and just look at our obs observations. And what you'll do is go through this wave right here and grab different data points. We're always interested in the bottom number, this thing, I'm trying to scroll to it, this thing right here. So from 1950 to 2013, what is the average observed temperature for that month? For April, it was 54.3. And in Desmos, if you just click plus and go to table, you can quickly set this up. So I'll start this with you. Uh, do one for January, right? And then two for February, and then enter, 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 all the way to December, and go back to the Climate Explorer and get the numbers you need again. So I'll start in January. 30.3 is the first number you need for January. So why don't you pause the video, get those numbers set up, put them in your table, and then what you're going to do is click a folder Call it whatever you want. I'll say uh, original data. Okay. And then you can put this into your folder by clicking and just sliding over. You see a line that pops up? That will get us into that folder. So why don't you pause the video and do that? Okay, so at this point, I've added some other folders here just for the demonstration in this video. But I'm assuming at this point you've got the months and data points here. And if you click on this, you should be able to see the points. If you can't, let's say you're um, zoomed into some other region. Remember, you can just click and drag. And if you hold Shift and get near an axis, you can drag that down. And then space out the points however you want. So I'll leave it like this for now. I'm going to minimize that folder. And now I'm going to go, this is, I put in a folder called the sinusoid components. I'm going to calculate a sinusoid, right? I'm going to do some calculations to find the sinusoid that models this data. So if I do this, I can show you. Um, I like to type out what I'm doing as I go along. So for example, I typed out midline. Remember that if you hit enter in Desmos and then you type in a quotation, you can type text here to keep track of your work. So the first thing I'm doing is keeping track of my midline. And here I'll show you. I called the midline D, you can call it whatever you want. The midline, as you probably know, is an average of the highest and lowest temperatures, and these are the highest and lowest in our data set. Dividing it by two gives me the midline 55. It doesn't graph anything, it's just a variable. And I like to keep these things separate. I guess I could have called this Y from the beginning to do that, but as a second step, 
I define the midline as some value y equals d, and d is the midline. So if I want to see that, right, there's my midline right there. Then I repeat the process essentially with amplitude. So it's the same numbers, right? I'm going to scroll so you can see that. Same exact numbers, but instead of adding, we're subtracting, right? The amplitude is the deviation from the midline. So we take the high minus the low, that's the distance between them, divided by 2, and that tells you how much the amplitude is deviating from the midline. In this case, it tells me the amplitude is 24.7. So if this is my midline here, uh, I'm saying that the highest point is 24.7 from the that midline, and the lowest point is also 24.7 here. That's the amplitude. Now for period, this is for a year. So the period is going to be 12. I like to actually use the half period. And that's you don't have to do that. You can stick with the full period if you'd like. But the half period is convenient because I'm taking 7 that's for July, the hottest month, minus 1, January. And that reminds you, OK, the half period is 6. Why would I write that out? Well, I want to have the variable here, p. And I'm in my case, p is for half period. That's just the notation I chose to use. But again, you could call it um, something else if you want. All right, why is that useful? Well, the half period is often easiest to work with in calculations, and it also models a quick way to find phase shift. Phase shift is how we're, we're translating our function, right? So I want to use the variable c for that. And the phase shift, we can just take an average of 1 plus 7, which is of course is 4. But if we look on the graph right here, right here's 1 and here's 7. Halfway between them is 4. And that point right there, if I, that, if I treat that point, that input 4, as my phase shift, um, I would be taking a sine wave, essentially, from the y-axis over 4, and then going from there. I'm treating the phase shift here. Um, and again, it's to the right, so the, the sine function would start normally from the y-axis here and go up. But I'm moving over 4 to this point, so it's going to be minus 4. So that's a convenient way to do our phase shift. Okay. Now we've got all of our pieces. Now I want to model the um, data I have with the sinusoid function. So this is the equation I chose right here. OK, A for amplitude, which we've already defined, times the sine of, be careful here, this is my angular velocity, or sometimes referred to as a B value. I defined it as pi over the half period. And you might be using the full period, in which case you would do 2 pi over p, right? Same number, because this is pi over 6, and 2 pi over the full period, 2 pi over 12, it's still the same thing. But be careful with that. Here's my phase shift, and here's my midline d. And that's why I chose d for midline. I just, I like the alphabetical nature of this a, c, and d. I had a b here originally, but decided it's a little bit better to put pi over p. You can, of course, write that a different way if you want, but there's our model. OK, now I want to model what's going to happen in the future. And if we use the data point that it, the land and sea are increasing by about 0.32 degrees Fahrenheit every 10 years, we can begin to adjust this function. Let's say this right here represents the um, year 2013. We can project how the temperature, the monthly average maximum temperature that these data points are, will change over time. Right? So how do we do that? So in this folder right here, this is my approach. And I think originally I had a 10 down here. So I'll explain this. I changed it to 120. And instead of just an x here, I put x minus 13. So I made some adjustments. At the My original work was incorrect. So what's happening here? So f of x is the sine function we have already. right? That's what this is. And what we're doing is we're adding the increase of 0.32 for every 10 years, which is we're in months. So let's do 120 months. Although I'm doing x minus 13 because I don't want to treat the current data as um, part of the data set that we're raising. Like these temperatures here are already observed from 1950 to 2013, so they already include that rising of temperature. It's already been incorporated into these data points here. That's my reasoning, and obviously you could disagree with that, but that's my thinking. And I only want, this is a domain restriction, I only want to graph this new function after in, um, the first year, so after the first 12 months. So I did uh, x is greater than or equal to 13, so basically starting in January of 2014. Now, over here is the midline function. I called it h of x. And the midline, uh, again, is as, as to increase at this rate of 0.32 for every 120 or every 10 months. And I did multiply it by x minus 13 um, again because 
uh, I want to start this line essentially at 13 and uh, has a height of 55 at the beginning because that's the height of the midline of the original function. So starting at the midline height and then going up from there. Let's take a look at this. So if we uh, turn them on, you can see okay, it's starting at the 13 month over here and we're seeing both functions on top of each other. And this sine function, by adding the increase to it, we're basically telling Desmos to graph our sine function, but adjust the midline as we go on, to add this as we go on. So if I drag this in, you can see that over time, there's a deviation in the temperature. And it might take some time to really see that deviation, right? But as we go on and on, eventually, there's a real divergence in these temperature patterns, right? And the further you go, the more they diverge. Okay, last thing is to look at uh, what happens uh, or what are some possible ways to make the average temperature go up by two degrees? Like, what does that really mean for our data points? So if we go back here to our original folder and click the gear, we can copy data, duplicate it here. So what I would do is I would duplicate that data and then drag it down into, a, let's say, a new folder. So it's the original same data points, except now my points are draggable. Let me turn this off here. We don't need the old stuff. Okay, so minimize that. Okay, what I did was I clicked on the gear, go over to the data points and click that. There's an option to actually make points draggable. You see, if you toggle that, it changes. And what that allows me to do is to drag a point and see how it impacts my model. The model is simply what I wrote down here. This is a regression on Desmos, and I called it Y2 because I named these data points Y2 and X2. I want to make sure they're different from my other data set, so you want to do that as well. And then I do tilde, some amplitude. Again, I put a 2 in here, so it's not the same as before. Um, I wrote pi over 6, but let me just call it B2, give it some flexibility. I don't want to restrict myself to that exact period. I want the model to fit the best that it can, although you might disagree and choose uh, pi over 6. And then x2 again, because these, that's these data points here, minus c2 and plus d2. So that's the phase shift I need and the midline. I need to model the data. And that's what this is. So right now, the midline, it says 55. Ignore that. That's something else I was playing with. It's 55.0154. So I want it to go up by 2 degrees. So how can I do that? What are some possibilities? So if you drag these points around, each point here represents a certain... So each point here represents a certain month, right, in our timeline. So mess around with this. See what it really means to make that temperature go up by two degrees, and then talk about it. Like, what, what does that really mean? That's kind of, or think about it. If you're not, This is for my students, of course, but if you're just playing around with this, you might wonder, what does it really mean to make this average or midline go up by two degrees? All right, thanks.